in front of the team, Bill Dorsett. On the first play, point to Ron Springs and said, that one there is Springs. And there is, of course, Tom Landry with a new trick coat. Looks like a new hat, too. Two wide receivers out wide to the right. Dave Salve inside Drew Pearson. And Salve goes in motion. Pitches out to Dorsett. They force quickly. Dorsett breaks the tackle, gets down inside the Eagle 40 to 37. Frank Lamassa on the stop. The Giants keep their playoff hopes alive. It's been a long, long time. Those of you who watched the Giants beat St. Louis 20 to 10, welcome to Texas Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. We're just in the Cowboys' first possession. The Eagles had it three plays, had to punt. Dallas at the Philadelphia 38. No harm, guys. Second and five. Butch Johnson lined up in the backfield at the moment, and now he goes out. Here's Danny White to Johnson. Got it, and appears to have a first down out of bounds on the far side of the field by Herman Edwards. Let's look at the Eagle defense, which has been called by Dick Vermeil, their coach, as a great one. Three-man front, Harrison, Johnson, Harrison. The linebackers, Wilkes, Chesley, Lamaster, and Jerry Robinson. And the secondary, Blackmore, Edwards, Logan, and Bernard Wilson. Blackmore in place of Roy L. Young, and that's correct in the lineup. First down, Dallas. The Eagles, 31, no score, but the Cowboys on the move already. Salve flanked on the left. Pearson starts in motion. Pearson comes back. He meant to do all that. Penalty marker down. Salve the catch at the 15. Pearson started up and then started back. I don't, I'm not sure that that was the violation, but it looked to me as if he had corrected it. That's exactly what it is, Pat. He started in motion, which is okay, but he went forward before the ball snapped. So that'll be against the Cowboys, and it'll come back. But look at the protection that Danny White has here. And when you have that type of protection, then you can stand up and find those receivers in the middle of the field. Jerry Markley. Illegal motion, number 88, offense, first down. Yep, he did. He took that step forward. So as long as you go parallel in motion, it's okay. But when you take that step forward before the ball snaps, and that's illegality. 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 That is fine. That's good word. Good word. First down, 15. And off there. Scurry for us. For about five, Jerry Robinson made the tackle. Dorsett got back to about the original line of scrimmage. You know, I thought it was interesting on that second down play where they got the first down to Butch Johnson that the Cowboys were able to sneak three wide receivers into the game and then not allow the Eagles to get their fifth defensive back in there. That's a way to do it, do it on first and second down. Called the uh, coaching technique. Coaching technique. Intelligence. Also related. Second down, nine. White back. White has his pass almost picked off by Bernard Wilson. He threw high. That was one, of course, we know that Danny White hasn't played since since Thanksgiving Day. He was injured in that game. Didn't play last week. Glenn Carano started, so this is really his first game back in two weeks. That one got away from him. Already. He's been throwing in practice and throwing quite well. You see his ranking as far as the NFC's quarterbacks are concerned. But uh, throwing in practice is one thing. Throwing against the Eagles is something else. Third down nine. Ball got to 30. They're in field goal range already. Now White operates from the shotgun. Johnson brings in motion to the left. Standing, pumping, throwing. No good. Intended for James Jones, incomplete. And Raphael Septien will come on. Jerry Robinson was the Eagle defender. Septien having a great year. He's having a great year, and he feels real good today. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. He has his coach back, Ben Agagenian, who had a brain tumor and had surgery on it just five weeks ago, and he's back with the Cowboys. And looks good. We saw him in really practice does. yesterday. Charlie Waters, the holder. This will be from 48 yards out. The can get it there. Oh, Iron Scott hits the upright and bounds back onto the playing field. Hits the left up 
strike. Plenty of distance. Didn't get it up in the air like he would normally do, but still it got over everybody and got there. Septi in misses. The Eagles take over at their own 30-yard line. They turn away the Cowboys at least for the moment. It's nothing, nothing in the first. Nothing, Dallas nothing. First quarter at Texas Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. A game that means so very much, not only in the standings, but to the individuals and coaches and organizations on both sides. The Eagles with the football. This is the second time they've had it. Wilbert Montgomery and Hubert Oliver, the runners. Again, the Eagles operate with a two tight end setup. It's back Montgomery. And Montgomery gets about eight or nine before he's finally stopped by John Dutton coming across from the other side. But Montgomery got the good yardage. Washington 38, Baltimore 14. These are finals. Washington, regardless of that victory, is out of the playoff picture. Green Bay. Still in the picture, 35 to 7 over New Orleans, and what a turnaround they've accomplished. San Diego came back. Tampa Bay had been leading in the closing minutes. San Diego beat them 24-23. Both teams still alive in the playoff playoff picture. Cincinnati eliminates Pittsburgh. They clinch the AFC Central. Presley moves over to the right side. And it'll be Montgomery again. And again, Montgomery will have more than enough yardage for a first down. Randy White finally got him to the ground, but the Eagles now, they can't uh, be too conservative. Let's get after him. 19-10, Buffalo over New England. Buffalo, the championship hopes still alive. Third quarter, Miami over Kansas City, 10-7. Both of those teams still in the playoff picture. A lot of things going on around the NFL. Time of the year, you really start to enjoy and feel more and more of a part of what's going on. That was Montgomery you were looking at. This is Jaworski throwing and throwing low and outside. Ball one. Low and outside, that was. You know, I think that Ron Jaworski sometimes takes a little while to get settled down. And Ernie Stoutner, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, was saying yesterday that they want to rush him early, pressure him early, not let him get off to a good start. There's Ernie Stoutner right there in the middle. See, pulling up those pants. Tom Landry's telling him <laughs> what he wants. What a conversation. Ernie would hurt you. <laughs> yeah, he sure would. I think he still could. <laughs> Just like it. Second down, Jaworski drops. Now they get some pressure on him. Not necessarily almost picked off by Dennis Thurman and sent it for Charles Smith again. Jaworski does look indeed a little bit tight. You know, it's interesting that the Eagles are starting off here working on Dennis Thurman, you know, and staying away from Everson Walls, but that's the second time out there that, uh, you know, that they've gone there, and they've almost had it picked off. Number 32. He was fined in the first game between these two, you remember, for hitting Jaworski with his helmet. Fined $1,000, in fact. Steve Wilson now comes in and is standing out in front of Charlie Smith. And Smith, looking back at Jaworski, not sure what's going on. Nevertheless, they snap. Jaworski looking down the middle, fires, passes, complete to Carmichael. Good catch, good throw. Dennis Thurman again, the defender. You know, that's the thing that Dick Vermeil was saying, that there's a couple of people that they have to get the ball to. One is Harold Carmichael, who we see isolated here. See, he's a slot, a little bump there. He uses a pass rush move to get away. He just runs a little hook, but what a target he is in, there in the middle of the field. That's a story on Carmichael. The rest of the story is that he is 6'8", and about a foot taller than the man who just tackled him, and a quick count is Montgomery. Maybe a yard. Ed too tall Jones on the bottom of that pile. What a year he is having. You know, I think the big improvement of Ed too tall Jones is his play against the run. You know, running to that right side where where Jones and John Dutton is has been very tough for all the Cowboy opponents this year. Ed Jones, 6'9", 270. It's got to be awesome. To an offensive tackle. I'd like to be the right tackle and line up and see that on the other side of that left-handed stand. That's Jerry Sizemore, who is the tackle. Now they use the two tight ends on the right side in front of him. And Jaworski drops. They double team Randy White. They fire down the middle to John Spagnola. 
who is shy of a first down, just shy of the 30, about the 32-yard line. Mike Hegman was on Spagnola. Dick Vermeil likes this formation with the two tight ends. I think, I think if there's anything that we've seen in the National Football League this year, it's more use of two tight ends because it really spreads out the defense. You can't have a weak side linebacker anymore. And, and Dick Vermeil was saying that it does influence some of the flex defense in the Cowboys. Third and four. Three wide receivers, including Ron Smith. He's on the left, left side. Charlie Smith. And Carmichael on the right. Billy Canfield standing back and now coming out of the backfield. Quickly. Pass is incomplete. Ed to Tall Jones batted it in the air again. And that just tells you what kind of a uh, defensive, destructive force he can be. Watch this. You know, coming from the left of the screen, you know, when you're six foot eight, all you have to do on a pass rush is get about three steps. That's what Ed Tutal Jones did, and he gave the ball right back to Ron Jaworski. I was about to ask you, when's the last time you had seen a pass that was almost completed to the guy who threw it? <laughs> he misjudged it. You know, he had it. He really didn't concentrate on it and look it into his hand. Better off that he didn't catch it. If he had caught it, they'd been out of Franklin's range. Now they're in. From 59, uh, 49 yards out. Thank you, pardon. He can get it there, too. With some left. Wide to the right. Two of the best field goal kickers in the NFL have each missed. Franklin, too, had plenty of distance. But he missed it right. Septian missed it to the left, and it's still nothing, nothing. taken down by Dennis Harrison. That's one of the reasons that the Eagles do have the leading defense in the league. People like Harrison. They move them around a lot on that offense, that defensive line, but they still get the job done. That tells you the story. So this is one of the, the things we'll always keep them, them in game. So people say, what kind of game will this be? Could Dallas possibly blow them out? I say there's no way. Their, their defense is too strong. A strong defense never gets blown out. Dave Jones and Dorsett, the two runners. And off Dorsett. And Dorsett has some room. Swings out to the right side. Randy Logan made the tackle, but Dorsett got about seven. I'll tell you, that's a pretty picture. Did you see that? He had both of his guards. He had Kurt Peterson and Herb Scott out in front of him. He waited just long enough, and then he was able to get that little first at the end. There it is, Let's John. Watch it. Now, watch both guards. This is a beautiful picture. Watch both the guards will pull and leave. See now how Dorsett just waits there a little for Herb Scott to get turned up? See, he'll turn in. Kurt Peterson is in front, kicks out. Look at that. That's just how you draw it up, except no one got Randy Logan. <laughs> We'll take it, though. Five yards they give him. You get five every time, you're in pretty good shape. Doug Cosby was the man in motion. Third down, White outside. That's Cosby. And Cosby is cut down hard by Herman Edwards, but still hangs on. First down, Dallas. Yeah, that's one thing the Cowboys have. They have three tight ends, Billy Joe Debris, Doug Cosby, Jay Saldy. They use them all in different situations, and they always get the ball to one of them on big third down plays. And they also have that added dimension of those three terrific wide receivers in Butch Johnson, Tony Hill, and Drew Pearson. A lot of weapons that can come after you. They get the big ones in those three. James Jones and Newhouse, the runner. This is Newhouse. For about two. Carl Harrison stopped him on first down. You know, probably of all the defensive linemen in the National Football League, that guy right there, number 78, is probably the best against the run. You know, he never seems to get blocked. He makes plays when they run at him. He makes plays when they run in the middle. And he makes plays when they run across the field. There's an all-pro. And a terrific guy as well. Here's White on second down. Down the middle intended for Dorsett. I think Frank Lamaster knocked it away. You know, there's one of the guys that, that is really having an outstanding year. I know they were saying last night that, that in this year, Frank Lamaster is probably having his best year that he's ever had as an Eagle. And this is his eighth year. 
Very, very steady. By the way, George Rogers of the New Orleans Saints had 70 yards rushing today. That game is over against Green Bay. His total to date is 1,567 for the season. And you know that Tony Dorsett had 1,506 going into this game, so he can possibly recapture the NFL's rushing lead today. Rogers is through, Dorsett is not. White looking, throwing wide and out of bounds, almost. Tony Hill was hidden on the sideline. Where did he come from? He really, he blended in with that, uh, with that big sideline marker that they have there. We didn't even see him, but watch Tony Hill. And this, and this was a great pass by Danny White. He had to throw it around Dennis Harrison. But watch him there. He's standing there. It just waits for the ball right on the sideline. The outside guy didn't get out far enough. Watch him. He's right there in the sideline. Both hands on the ball. Maybe his right heel was on that line. It was close. It was close. You can't tell if it's down on the ground or not, but it looks like he could have been out of bounds. First down, Dallas, nevertheless. They're going to call that one back. This is Tony Hill again, another first down. You know the problem there, Pat, on that field, it's not marked properly. There's no sideline. There's no sideline on that field. Watch it. You see in the side there, you see the hash marks, but there's no line there. It's just the start of that white area. That's Tony Hill again. Not the play we were talking about when he was out of bounds, but the one following that. First down, Dallas at the Eagle 29. No score still. 4.55 left first quarter. Danny White. He lost last week. Now back at quarterback for Dallas. James Jones. Tony Dorsett, the two setbacks. And this would be the and he scurries down to the 25, a gain of about three. Frank LeMaster on the bottom of the pile for Philadelphia. That was an interesting formation. The Cowboys came out with the two tight ends plus a wing. It looked like a short yardage offense. And again, that's the same thing. Against a three-man line, you try and reduce and spread those linebackers out and just pick holes in the middle. It'll be second down seven with 4 10 left first quarter and no score as yet. A lone setback this time is Dorset. Makes the Dorset. White going for Hill. Has him. Out of bounds, out of bounds. No good. Richard Blackmore, the defender. I was wondering when they were going to start trying Richard Blackmore. We know that Roy Nell Young, the regular left corner for the Eagles, is out of this game. And right there, one step. The second foot didn't get in. Richard Blackmore starting the second game. He started last week against the Redskins. And that, of course, would be the place you'd logically think that they might start to work. A new man, let's find out how he can play. You know, an interesting thing, of the eight defensive backs in this game, five of them were free agents. It wasn't something about the draft, huh? That could tell you something about the scouting. Effective both these organizations are. Johnson swings in motion. And the shotgun White gets away from one, has it batted up into the air. And it'll be fourth down. Dallas and again Septian will come on. Good defense, great pass rush. You know, we always think of pass rushes where they have to sack the quarterback. All they have to do is get about three steps, get in front of the quarterback, and get their hands up. And we've seen that two times so far in this first quarter. Our buddy George Allen call those things? Hurries. He calls them hurries, but he has a word for after the quarterback throws it when he hits them. I always thought that was illegality. <laughs> From 44 yards out this time, with Charlie Waters holding, Raphael Septien. Long pass. Another line drive, and again, Septien drills it left. This time he didn't catch the upright. The Eagles will take over. And again, Dallas moves it. But they come away with the score still tied at nothing nothing and their rivalry with the Philadelphia Eagles. There is Ben Agajanian. We were just talking with Raphael Septi in a minute ago. He was a, an outstanding field goal kicker himself. In fact, he's the man I replaced with the New York Giants. He's quite a guy. He's been a great influence on Raphael Septien. And he had brain surgery five weeks ago, and it's great to see him back. Indeed, and he looks good. First down, Philadelphia, 350 left, first quarter, no score. 
First and 10 from their own 26. They have Pepley in motion. Pitches after Montgomery quickly. Dallas overruns the play just a bit. Randy White comes out and makes the initial contact on Wilbert Montgomery. Here is the story on the Dallas defense. It's a little bit misleading. 21st in total defense. That's how much they've allowed. But in recent weeks, things have changed, and that's the turnover ratio, a very important statistic. And they're number two, but look who's number one, and you wonder why the 49ers are up where they are, why they clinched their division. Are they for real? Yes. Jaworski on second and five. Montgomery got five on first. Here is a fake to Trepley, a throw down the middle of Montgomery. First down, Philadelphia. Michael Downs made the stop. Montgomery of... An outstanding runner is, of course, you know, and also one of the better pass receivers. But just when he fakes the ball to his tight end, coming in motion, it's Wilbert Montgomery right, right up the middle. Now watch, if Michael Downs doesn't make that play, he would have gone all the way into the end zone. From Abilene Christian. First down Philadelphia, their own 45. Clock running at three and a half, got two and a half minutes left to play first quarter. A lot of time for Jaworski. Spagnola completes another first down. Bob Brunick tripped him up. Spagnola has been bothered by a hamstring pull almost the entire year. Seems sort of loosening up a little bit now. And that's been one of the problems with the Eagles because they like to use the two tight ends. They like to use John Spagnola, and they like to have both of them, both he and Keith Prefley, in the game at the same time. In Dallas territory at the Cowboy 44, the Eagles. Hubert Oliver and Montgomery Deep. Trepley now moves over to the right side. And Jaworski, not quite sure of what's going on, takes a timeout and will come over and talk to Dick Vermeil. That'll mean that the Cowboys still have three of their timeouts left in the first half, all of them. And Philadelphia will be down to two. Nothing, nothing, still the score. Dick Vermeil, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, just called a timeout. His quarterback, Ron Jaworski, did. You might remember, and certainly you will if you're an Eagle fan, that they had some trouble getting one call last week and wound up with an interception. And perhaps that cost them a football game. Now they've used one early to get things squared away. Jaworski. Complete Montgomery. Shy of a first down. Mike Downs right there with him. And they're with him quickly. So Dick Vermeil loves to have Montgomery in the backfield, of course, to run the ball, but he likes to have him outside. As we see him out here. He's lined up on Mike Downs like an outside receiver. See, he said that he probably has the best moves of any player on his team, including his outside receiver. That's a tough thing. You know, he wants to play him outside to have him catch the ball, but then you need him inside to run it, too. In that formation again, Montgomery has flanked out to the left. Second down. Hubert Oliver struggles and gets an eagle first down as they move deeper and deeper into Dallas territory. Neither team been able to score so far, but the Eagles are really getting closer. Mike Hegman made the stop. As we look at Hubert Oliver, he didn't play last week. He has an ankle injury, and they have a new deal for him. They made a cast. They took his leg, and they made a cast and he's wearing a very lightweight cast over his ankle. Made of plastic. Yeah, made of plastic. That's amazing. And taped over the outside of that. First down, Eagles. Swarski, if he has time, will fire and does Charlie Smith. Everson Walls with a great defensive play. Timed it well and got his hand in there to knock it away. You know, the great thing about these young defensive backs, you know, they haven't been at all these big games where they play tight. Watch that left hand. You see, he's right there. He's right on Charlie Smith. Right at the end, just put that left hand over and knock the ball down. You know, I love to see young players play in the defensive secondary. The 49ers have it. This team has it. Look who's leading in interceptions. Ten interceptions. And look at the team total down at the bottom that leads the NFL. With two free agent rookies in that secondary. There's one of Niverson Wall. Come a long way. 
Sure has. They were working on him early. But sometimes you can work too much. Pass is almost picked off by Brunig. I think Spagnola got a hand on it first. And Brunig couldn't find the handle. I think he was throwing to Presley, though, because Presley was about 10 yards behind Spagnola, and he was waiting for the ball, and it looked like Spagnola knocked it down. We see Jaworski looking over at the Eagle bench. He gets his signals from the sideline as to what play the Eagle Brain Trust would like to have called. Five out of 12, 52 yards so far. Minus to make the 32, three wide receivers in the game for Philadelphia. And Billy Canfield. We had the two touchdowns last week against Washington in the backfield. Shotgun formation for Jaws. They're going to blitz him. They chase him. They almost had him. He throws it away. In the direction of Montgomery, Dutton, and Jones all over Jaworski. But just I tell you, here in Dallas, these people love their cowboy defense. Now watch the blitz come out. We see Dickerson there coming from the left. Charlie Waters in the middle. Dutton is the man coming straight up the middle that flushed him out right into too tall Jones. No penalty markers, however. That's what the crowd was booing and kissing about was they thought he should have been called for intentional grounding. Tony Franklin, 18 out of 29 for the year. This one from 50 yards. And again, he certainly has the leg strength to reach that far. He can get us there. From Texas A&M, Tony Franklin. Kyra holding. Plenty far. And plenty good. The Eagles put the numbers on the board first from 50 yards away. Tony Franklin gives them their first points in a 3 nothing lead. Next Sunday on CBS, as things are starting, beating St. Louis today, keep their playoff hopes alive. Of course, the Cowboys only have to win one more game or tie to clinch the division. But next week will be important for them, even if they win or tie today, because then they'll be playing for home field advantages in the playoffs. And the teams like this are so successful at home, that can be very, very important. Jimmy Newsom over on the sideline feels it at the three. Newsom lumbers outside the 25 to about the 28 or 29. Ray Phillips made the tackle. It'll be first down Cowboys. We, we talk about the Cowboys, and of course we know that all the Eagles have to do is one more win, and that clinches a playoff berth for them. And of course, if they win both, then the Cowboys should happen to lose both. They would be the NFC Eastern Division champion. So it's a big one. At Summerall with John Madden at Texas Stadium, where the Eagles... 50-yard field goal by Tony Franklin to lead Dallas 3-0. Cowboys with the football. Danny White, their quarterback. Dorsey. Waiting and looking and finally cutting. Herman Edwards made the tackle. Let's look at some other scores right now. Miami 17, Kansas City 7. And Denver, of course, in quest of a playoff position. 7-0 over Seattle, first quarter. Chicago 7, Oakland 6, first quarter. And Houston, San Francisco, nothing, nothing in the second. Oakland still alive, of course, with a playoff hope. Second down, four. Dorsett got six. Opening minutes of quarter number two. Dorsett again gets the carry. This time he just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before Jerry Robinson makes the stop. I'll tell you, the Eagles really play that three-man defensive line well. You know, they don't over-pursue, and that's what you have to do against a Tony Dorsett. Everyone has to play their man, play their area, and wait for the ball to come to you. I think this group here does it as well as anyone. Now you see number 71, Ken Clark, enter your picture. He replaces Charlie Johnson. And what the Eagles feel is a passing situation. And he's their pass rusher. And the Cowboys have different blocking schemes for the two different nose tackles. Greg Brown also in the lineup for Philadelphia. Possibly went in motion. White from the shotgun throws quickly. Ball deflected and knocked loose. Almost intercepted Richard Blackmore, the defender. Intended for James Jones, who couldn't hang on. And White. 
will have to punt for the first time. We were talking to Danny White about this a couple weeks ago. And you know, he loves to punt. He wants to punt. But sometimes after he has an incomplete pass on third down, sometimes he has a little trouble concentrating on the punt. And he said sometimes he gets mad and he just takes it out on the ball. I love that kind of talk. Let's see if he does now. I bet he does. He's standing at his own 18. He'll kick from about the 21. Good kick. Wally Henry goes all the way back to his own 15. And Henry with some room is cut down. Cut down by Steve Wright on a good, good open field tackle. 3-0, the Philadelphia Eagles leading Dallas in the opening minutes of quarter number two. Here's one that Danny White got mad at, Pat. Watch this. He really got everything into that one, 51 yards. Chase Wally Henry all the way back to the 15. He got it back to the 20. Call it the 29, just shy of that, where the Eagles will have it first and 10. They lead 3-0 over Dallas. Philadelphia having lost three in a row, trying to get back on the track. The tight end moves over next to another tight end on the right-hand side. And they come in that direction. It's Gilbert Montgomery. Montgomery will get two or three. Charlie Waters up to make the force and tackle. Maybe he got more than two or three. I bet you we'll, we'll see more of that formation. Did you see what it did to the Dallas defense? The Eagles shifted one man, and the Cowboy defense had to shift four defensive players. That's the type of thing that you look for to get a bunch of defensive movement before the snap. Again, Charlie Waters, who is sort of a, they say, a coach on the field. And that's sort of a tired cliche, but that indeed is what he just about is. And he intends to be a coach when his playing days are over. And here again, they shift four for one. Montgomery. Got him shifting, but they didn't fool him. D.D. Lewis stopped Montgomery shy of a first down. We're talking about Charlie Waters. You know, he's also a Clemson alumni and a Clemson fan. He has on his on the back of his helmet there, he has a paw of power. A tiger paw. See it right there, that little red thing underneath is a, is a paw power for Clemson University, number one. Under Danny Ford. Third down short. Third down and two, in fact. Booker Russell into the game now. Pitches back to Montgomery. And Montgomery will have it and more and more. Montgomery finally out of bounds midfield. And as Thurman hit him, so did Benny Barnes. Wilbur Montgomery is a, you know, is a great short yardage runner because he has that quickness, but he's also strong. Now watch the fullback here. Booker Russell will come out and lead it. He doesn't even find anyone to block. See, they got the Cowboys all inside. Now watch 32. He finally finds someone there, and then boom, Montgomery can break for the first down. He's still going. Booker Russell did the shielding on... Dennis Thurman to keep him out of the picture. And Montgomery got away from Brunig on his own. First down, midfield, Philadelphia. Jaworski on first for Carmichael Hazard. Out of bounds by Everson Wall. You know, I like this offensive game plan of the Eagles a lot better than the one that they had a few weeks ago. The big thing is not really run or pass, but it's mixture. I think you have to run sometimes, pass sometimes, run on first First down, run on second down, throw on second down, so the defense can't play one or the other. You think back over the last three weeks, the losing streak. Dick Vermeil feels that the only game that they got outplayed, the only game they really got beaten was by the Giants. Here is Billy Canfield, and he won't have a first down. D.D. Lewis came up to trip him up. running with 11.20 left to play in the first half and Philadelphia leading Dallas by the score of 3 nothing. A 50-yard field goal by Tony Franklin. Sepien has missed two. Franklin missed one. Hit another. Third and three. 
Carmichael and Charlie Smith both wide to the right. Ron Smith out to the left side. Shotgun formation for the Eagles and Jaworski back. Watches it in. Pump. Goes deep for Ron Smith who has it. I'll tell you what a great play by Ron Smith. You know, they just picked him up three weeks ago. He was released by the San Diego Chargers. They say that they wanted to play him more because he's great against tight coverage and bump and run. And this is what he beat on this play. Look, right there at the bottom of the picture, he gets a step, the defender falls down, and the ball was thrown perfectly right over his outside shoulder. The defender was Steve Wilson, John. I know it. They were going down the field, bumping. Ron Smith got the step. Now watch, even before he trips, you see Ron Smith had the step on him. And I don't know what concentration means, but I think that's it. It means enough for first and goal for Philadelphia at the one-yard line. The Eagles have Booker Russell in the backfield. And Billy Canfield. Carmichael goes over to the left. That's Booker Russell. Shy of a touchdown by about a half yard. It, looks like. so it is a touchdown. It was a little late. Again, all he has to do, the officials had to wait to find if the football broke the plane of the goal line. And somewhere they saw that it did. You can't spot the ball on the goal line. Although they look like they're trying to spot it down there, don't they? Now, watch this here. Short yardage. Defensive line gets down. Everyone has to get low. Offense gets some movement and drive. Now, watch Booker Russell there. You can't see it there, but the ball has to touch the goal line. Maybe you can now. Close. Tony Franklin for the extra point, but Kyra Holding hits it. And it's Philadelphia 10, Dallas nothing. And we have 10 minutes, 8 seconds left to play in the first half. The Eagles looked a little sluggish in the beginning, but now they've got it rolling, and they lead Dallas 10 nothing. It's a Wilbert Montgomery was shaken up on that last series, and he's over on the sideline being administered to, talked to. That's what he's done so far. The Eagles lead 10-0 as Franklin puts the bare foot to it. Again, it's Kenny Newsom over on the right side. And Newsom swings to the sideline, hit by Campfield, and down he goes. With the way things develop and have developed so quickly today and the victory by Cincinnati and Pittsburgh and the other things that have happened, a penalty marker down here, you can see it on the other side of the field, Oakland now does not have a chance to be in the playoffs. They are out of it. We'll catch you up uh, as the afternoon passes on all the other possibilities and as well as we can interpret things, tell you who's in the playoffs or still has hope for the playoffs. Really sets up a big match between Tampa and Detroit next week. Holding number 51 on the run back. First down. Holding against Anthony Dickerson. That's the Eagles scoring drive. They lead 10-0. Seven plays, 71 yards. The big one from Jaworski to Ron Smith. You know, an interesting thing in statistics, last year, the Eagles were the third penalized team. This year, they're 27. Least most. Most, 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 most. That's a big difference. Of course, that penalty was against the Cowboys. Nothing doing. Tony Dorsett, the ball carrier, he might have gotten a yard, but that's all. You know, another interesting thing is, is the Cowboys have scored first in 11 of their 14 games, and two of the games that they lost, they didn't score first. I don't know if that's a trend or means anything, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah, you'd like to be ahead early, I think. I remember early in the season, every time that they scored first, they won. Every time the other scored, the other team scored first, they lost. Tony Hill is put out wide to the left. Drew Pearson, just barely in your picture up in the left-hand corner. White. First down, Hill almost broke away. Herman Edwards wrapped him up. He almost got away from Herman, and he did do enough to get a first down. Herman Edwards looked on that play like he had a little too much respect. And he was, the cushion was too large. You see, he's playing off. Looks like he's waiting for a deep one. You see when Hill catches the ball, and Herman Edwards was about five yards away from him. He really didn't get a jump and close on that one. First down, Dallas, their own 32. Philadelphia leading 10-0. 
Hill again comes wide left, Pearson wide right. Dorsett. Busted one tackle and broke out for about seven yards to the 40-yard line, trying to regain that NFL rushing title, lead at least from George Rogers. There is Montgomery, who has a problem with his wrist, we have learned, but he should be back in the next possession. Excuse me, sir. He really has to be back because he's such an important part of this game plan against the Cowboys. He can make them do a lot of things, whether he's involved with the football or not. Newhouse and Dorsett, the two running. And this is Newhouse. And Robert gets maybe a yard is punished back by Al Chesley. And Charlie Johnson, number 65 in there, he plays that center as well as anyway. You know, he plays that run, no movement on Charlie Johnson. He's right there in the middle, and he just takes that step to the right and closes it off. Newhouse goes out. Ron Springs, who scored three touchdowns last week, comes in. Along with Doug Cosby. There's the nose man, Charlie Johnson. They expect run, the Eagles do, or he wouldn't be playing. It would be Clark. Salvi comes swinging in motion. Fumble. Or set. Missed the exchange. The Eagles have the football and a chance to go further ahead. Watch this. Again, on short yardage, they usually put Salty in motion and run to the side of Salty. Now, Dorsett didn't get hit when he fumbled that. It looked like he was just trying to get it into his side, and the ball jumps out. Watch. He gets it here. Gets it here. He was just trying to adjust it. And it just bounced right out of his hand. Like they always uh, miss the exchange on something like that. Chesley made the recovery. 10-0 Philadelphia. Danny White. The exchange looks just a little high here, Pat. You want to get it in the area of the belt. You see, and it gets up a little high on his chest. You see that? And as it comes in, it hits the bottom of his shoulder pad and bounced out. That's the first turnover today. The Eagles get the ball to the Dallas 43, first and 10, and I guess they'll go for it right now. Again, we have turnover. Momentum. More points. Let's get it done quickly. Kicks back Montgomery. No place to go. Montgomery gets away from John Dutton. Is knocked down short of the line of scrimmage by Ed Tutal Jones. The first four possessions, the Eagles had it. Three plays and a punch. Eight plays in this FG. Nine plays. Franklin hit from 50. And the touchdown giving them that 10 nothing lead. Second down now and 12. They lost two on that last play. Six and a half minutes left first half. The Eagles have had great field position in this first half. And again, they have to take advantage of it. Second down. Golf play. Montgomery got three perhaps. Bob Brunig. Read it well. That middle linebacker spot is so important in a defense like Dallas plays. The flex of 4 3. He's always the leading tackler. One of the things that the Cowboys do in that flex defense is try to free the, line, the middle linebacker, and he will always have to be the leading tackler. It'll be third nine. 550 left to play before the halftime. Billy can't field in on the left side of Jaworski. Montgomery back there with him. Ryan Smith stood out wide to the right. Look out for him. Almost didn't get the playoff. Smith. First down. Interesting how they wind up with a guy like Ron Smith, who had some, perhaps, they say, personal problems in San Diego, got into a difference of opinion with the special teams coach, and was available. He was available. The one thing that they liked about him, he's always been with a passing team. He's from San Diego State. He played with the San Diego Chargers. He knows how to handle tight coverage. That time, they didn't play tight coverage against Ron Smith. Everson Walls was on him, and he played off of him. So he caught one against tight coverage deep. 
He caught his second one against Loose Cover. You never know how things work out. The only reason they picked him up was because they lost Scott 50. They shot Montgomery. Fumble. They lost Scott Fitzgerald to San Diego. You know, Wilbert Montgomery has had a problem with, with his wrist. He's having one now in this game. He had one last week, and, and that could be the cause of what we just saw. Montgomery, 45 yards, 10 rushes so far. Such a very vital part of the Eagle offensive picture. Guy Morris, the center, up over the ball. Second down, 11. For Charlie Smith, Dennis Thurman back there with him broke it up. I'll tell you, you know, the Cowboys have had the defense have Mike Downs, a rookie playing, Everson Walls, a lot of talk about that, Charlie Waters, the experienced veteran. But one guy who has really done an outstanding job as a corner this year is Dennis Thurman. He surely has. Third down, 11. 3.56 left before halftime. Billy Campfield and Ron Smith in the game now. Harold Carmichael and Charlie Smith go wide to the left. Ron Smith slip wide to the right. Warski again operates with Montgomery and Campfield by his side from the shotgun. 30 second clock running down to five seconds now. They do get it off a low snap. Warski fires down the middle. Picked off by Dennis Turner. And Thurman has some room. Thurman after the 30, Dallas will take over their 33rd interception of the year. Just talking about Dennis Thurman, and he comes up with it. Watch this now. Ron Smith didn't get both hands up. Now, what? Worst he finds him in the middle. He reaches out, and the ball was tipped. Dennis Thurman was back there, and it bounced right into his hands. And that's bringing this crowd alive now. You have to give John Dutton some credit for that interception, too, because he was all over Jaworski just as he let it go. Thurman with the interception. Seven interceptions for Dennis Thurman this year. An outstanding year, as John Madden was saying a minute ago. Here's what happened in Philadelphia the first time these two met this year. Thurman, number 32, on the right side. You know, he was not only penalized for that, but he was fined $1,000 by the commissioner, Pete Rosell, and now he's going to go to New York and have a hearing. What it was is he hits Jaworski in the back here with the crown of his helmet right there, didn't wrap his arms around. He said if he would have hit him with his face mask or wrapped his arms around, that would have been a legal hit. You know what happens to the fines that the players pay? Nope. They all go to the Brian Piccolo Cancer Fund. First down. Danny White going deep for Tony Hill. And he's just cut off by Richard Blackmore and never really had a chance for that one to be complete. Saw a minute ago Philadelphia's first four possessions here at Dallas. Six plays, a miss by Septien, ten a miss by Septien, a punt, and then a fumble by Dorset. It all adds up to Philadelphia 10, Dallas nothing, and a must game for both. You know, of all the games that Tony Dorsett has played, and of all the great games he's played, he's really never had a lot of that yardage against his Philadelphia Eagle defense. White back again. Protection looks like it should be good. So is the pass. Drew Pearson on his knees. Herman Edwards made the stop, but Drew got the first down. You know, we talk about finding holes in defenses. We'll see it here by Drew Pearson. You see it's his own defense. You see all those green jerseys? He just found the slot between the quarter, cornerback Blackmore and the linebacker and just knelt down right in that hole. There's Reggie Wilkes trying to get over to knock it down. But Drew down on his knees got the Dallas first. We OT left to play first half. 10-0 Philadelphia. And off Dorsett. This is the play he scored against Philadelphia in Philadelphia with. The Miami 
Dolphins have beaten Kansas City 17-7, and the Dolphins of Don Shula will be in the playoffs. Seems like they belong there, doesn't it? You know, there's an amazing man there, Tom Landry, how they can stay in the game this long and coach and win. Uh, I, I don't know how they do it, and Don Shula's another one. Bud Grant's another one. I have the greatest respect for those men. Their record speaks very well. All of those fellows. Pearson went in motion. Dorsett the ball carries. Dorsett hit down quickly and hard. Charlie Johnson, the first man there. Frank Lamaster, the other. Stopped shy of a first down by a couple, perhaps third and two. They call it. He's had a thousand yards rushing in his first five seasons, but he's also had in four years of college and high school before that. A long way back. A thousand for him. That's the two-minute warning for both coaches. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Texas Stadium. Philadelphia leading Dallas 10-0. Dallas has all three of their timeouts remaining. We just got the two-minute warning. Philadelphia has only two. Annie White, the quarterback. He has Springs and Dorsett behind him. They're down two. Was the man in motion. Dorsett, the man with the football, and he doesn't make it. Shy of the first down by about a foot, it looks like. Got to go now. You can't get there with a field goal. Septian can't reach it from there. See what Tom Landry decides. I'll tell you, with 141, there's plenty of time left. The Eagles have two of their timeouts. The Cowboys are going to take a timeout now to talk about it. I think they'll go for it, but if they don't get it, the Eagles have plenty of time. So Dallas down to two timeouts as Philadelphia is in the same situation. It's 10-0, Philadelphia. The preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. Landry changed his mind during that timeout. And I think it was a good change of mind because had they not made it there, the Eagles would have had two timeouts, one minute, 37 seconds left, and they would have had time to get another score. John Shira standing back deep for Philadelphia. Don't forget that Danny White did take off with it last week. Of course, the Eagles are very much aware about that, I'm sure. And he'll go ahead and kick. I expect Shira up the catch signal, and he takes it. Fumble! Dallas got it. Cowboys got it. Anthony Dickerson down quickly. You're talking about being snake bit. John Shira is snake bit now. That was a great punt by Danny White. He didn't need everything. He didn't need great distance. He wanted to get it up as high as he could. And it looks like here that John Shira just misjudges it a little. He looked it right into his hand, and it bounced off his arm. What a break for the Cowboys. Been a sad two weeks for John Shira. First and 10, Dallas at the Eagle. 22 timeouts remaining. Philadelphia leading 10 0. Dorsett, the lone back behind Danny White. Two tight ends. And now Tony Hill swings in motion to the right. And White goes right to work. For Drew Pearson, incomplete. Had a chance. Had a chance. Bernard Wilson, the defender. Herman Edwards back there with him. He looked like he had Herman Edwards' feet, but he didn't have Bernard Wilson. See? Now watch here. We'll see Drew Pearson come off the line. He's running a post pattern. See, he has a couple of steps right there on Herman Edwards, but Bernard Wilson, the free safety, was sitting right in the middle of the field. I saw John Shiro just bobble that punt come back into the Philadelphia defensive picture. Dallas in the huddle there. Shiro. Recall we told you earlier he was the one who holds for Tony Franklin and bobbled the ball last week against Washington when they had a chance to win that one. And now Dallas takes another timeout. They'll have one left as White goes over to talk with the man in the trench coat. John Shira is in there now, Pat. He's the fifth defensive back. On first down, the Eagles played with their regular four defensive back defense. Now on second and long, they're sure that the Cowboys are going to pass, so they're going to the five defensive back, four defensive linemen. The Eagles personnel director, Carl Peterson, in the middle of the screen right there. 
A man that puts on as many miles flying as I do and you do on the train. <laughs> Who gives me in that group? <laughs> Putting on miles flying. Carl Peterson was down here early. He watched some college games yesterday. Timeout picture you saw just there. The NFC Central Division situation now. Detroit, of course, won yesterday. They're 8 and 7. Tampa Bay, after losing to San Diego today, 8 and 7. And Green Bay, 8 and 7. Minnesota's out of it next Sunday. The NFL today will begin the day, and then you'll have Tampa Bay against Detroit. That ought to be a honey. That'll be for the championship. In the Silver Dome, where Detroit hasn't lost all year long. It looked good yesterday, too, didn't it? Ooh. Hungry and happy. And hippo. Hungry, happy, and hippo. All three very important. Three ages. White. Screen pass set up well to Dorset. Dorset cutting back to the inside. Stays on his feet to about the 11. Almost a touchdown. That one. Carl Harrison tripped him up, but Tony D almost was in. This was a big play here. It's a screen pass. Again, down a screen pass. The linemen will block, then they'll let the defensive line go. Now, Carl Harrison comes from way over on the other side. Now, watch this. He has his linemen out front. Dorsett makes a fine cut back here to get inside. And look, there's Carl Harrison coming from his right defensive end spot all the way across the field to tackle Tony Dorsett. Timeout Dallas. And that's all. That's the last one. The Eagles leading 10 nothing with a minute and one second left to play. In the first half, the AFC East, and you talk about your complicated pictures. Miami won today. They lead with a record of 10-4-1, followed by Buffalo at 10-5, and the New York Jets 9-5-1. All still alive. Next Sunday, again, the NFL today starts it, followed by the Green Bay Packers against the New York Jets in New York. You I bet talk. you when the season started, you wouldn't have thought that that one was going to mean that much, would you? I could never have figured out anything when the season started the way this is going. You know why that play was so big? There's Ed Tall Jones there thinking about what the defense has to do to stop the Eagles. But Carl Harrison made such a big play there because that forced the Cowboys into a third and short yardage instead of a first down. And they had to take a timeout now to get the first down. Third down. Yeah, that makes sense. I know what you mean. They are down to no timeout. That's one of the important factors. Danny White has them up. No shotgun. White goes after it himself and will get the first down. Now they'll have to hurry. They can now. They'll get up there and just hurry up. I'm sure he called two plays. The quarterback sneak plus this one from the shotgun. Clock running at 40 seconds left to play. Now the shotgun and now the throw. Pass intended for Tony Hill. Touchdown Dallas. Got it done quickly. Thrill Hill. Mr. Landry refuses to call it the shotgun, doesn't he? No, nope, he calls it the spread. He lets other people call it the shotgun, but the spread is his. Raphael stepped in with Charlie Waters holding. It's 10 seconds. FDN one of three kickers this year who has not missed an extra point. He still has it. 38 seconds left on the clock. The Eagles still have two timeouts left when they get it. You know, when you get down here inside the 10 yard line, you're thrown into the end zone. You want to throw it right at, right at that back pylon. You see the end pylon there? That's exactly where he threw it. And either your guy gets it or it goes out of bounds and stops the clock. That was a perfect throw. Watch it. Over your outside shoulder where it can't be knocked down or intercepted. Richard Blackmore was the Eagle defender who slipped and fell down. We mentioned to you, to you before. It rained all morning. It stopped now. Maybe a little bit of a light drizzle, but nothing serious. Traction is and should be 
very good. This is a new artificial turf at the Texas Stadium. Well, we were talking to Dick Vermeil before the game, and they had a, a, uh, a cover on the field. He said he had never seen this field, and his team had never played on this surface. A lot of the teams do not cover the field because it is artificial turf, but the Cowboys do. That's the first one that I've ever seen. But look what turnovers can do. The Eagles had control 10 to nothing. They fumble a punt. Now it's 10 to 7. A minute ago, the Cowboys were out close to midfield debating whether or not to go for it. They changed their mind, decided to punt, and they wind up with a touchdown. Billy Canfield coming out. Breaks one tackle at the 20. Still on his feet. Is knocked down by Everson Walls, among others. Guy Brown, Anthony Dickerson also there. 30 seconds left first half. 10-7 Philadelphia. The Eagles have two timeouts remaining. They'll start the clock when they put it in play. picture of that playoff situation we'll send you back to New York for Brent Musburger and Herb Cross. They'll have all the highlights and I'm sure they'll clear up the entire playoff picture. I want to go listen. Yeah, I do too. You ready, Brent? There's Tony Hill. Real Hill. Still has a smile on his face. The touchdowns do for you. First down, Eagle. Eagles apparently will just go ahead and run it out. Montgomery takes the handoff from Jaworski, gets two or three up the middle. Clock running. 24 seconds now. You see 20. Harvey Martin on the back. I'm sure there won't be another play because they, they don't have to get another playoff, so they'll just let the clock run out and go into halftime with a 10-7 lead. They've already started the stroll to the locker room, and that's indeed what the Eagles will do. So the score at the end of half number one in this long awaited for match between Philadelphia and Dallas is the Eagles 10 and Dallas 7. Anything surprise you, John? Well, surprise me. No, it's not really. But this, this team that we see going off here, the Eagles defense is really up for this team. They're doing everything that a defense. Franklin set the kickoff for Philadelphia. Number one with the bare foot. Rained all day. It stopped now. Line shot to Newsom. Bobbles picks up. Finally finds the handle. Comes up the sideline on the other side. Gets out there about the 19 minutes. Where Dallas will have it. Kicking away from James Jones all day has been Tony Franklin. Dre Phillips down to make the stop. First half statistics. You know, they look pretty close, really. The the big thing over there, the the, two, the turnovers down at the bottom. The Eagles had two. Of course, the big one makes puts Dallas in this game. That, of course, would be the fumbled punt. Dallas had a little debate in the event you just joined us about whether they could, should go for a first down or not. Closing seconds, first half, they chose to punt it, and the Eagles mishandled the punt. Dallas recovered, got the touchdown. Here's Dorsett. Yard, perhaps, done mostly on his own. Look back about what each coach thinks might be the key factor in stopping the other team, and they always say those two names, Montgomery and Dorsett, and that's the comparison in the first half. Montgomery, Wilbert, of the Eagles injured his wrist in the first half, and set out briefly but came back and seems to be okay now. Right now the Cowboys have the ball second and eight at their own 22. This is Springs. Penalty marker down. That's the first carry of the day for Ron Springs who's played so well and scored so well last week against Baltimore. Holding Dallas. You know, I wonder if that's intentional. We talked earlier about how Ron Springs said the Eagles were a piece of cake and he didn't get to carry the ball in the entire first half. Don Landry probably thought that Eagle defense is really going to key on you today, Ron, so we aren't going to give you the ball until halftime. Knowing Tom Landry, that might be a subtle kind of punishment. Holding number 64, offense, first down. On Rafferty. San Francisco finally a score at Candlestick. We had heard earlier 
that it had been raining on the West Coast, and that field can be unpleasant when it's dry and wet. It can really get nasty. 49 is ahead of Houston, no 7 up. Second down, 18, Dallas. Danny White, the quarterback, moves back into the spread, also known as the shotgun. Today. To Tony Hill. Got a few yards, not much. The Eagles, good coverage. Randy Logan made the tackle of Tony Hill. The Eagles had real good coverage down deep. The Cowboys had two men deep. Danny White looked. He couldn't find anything there, and he had to come off to Tony Hill. You know, as we watch this spread formation, it's very interesting. The two things. One, the center centers a ball without looking. It's a blind snap. The other is Danny White doesn't look at the ball. He looks through the ball down to the defense. Look, they don't have enough men. And now they got somebody. Out comes Cosby. They signal the plays in or send it in by messenger and apparently they didn't have enough folks to run what they had called. 30 seconds clock down to one second when they snap it. White back in the pocket throwing has a man open is Tony Hill. Juggling. Juggling. The official was looking at his feet. He was juggling the ball. That should not be a catch. I'll tell you, he has to have control of the ball. If he doesn't have control of the ball, it really doesn't make any difference where the feet are. I watch it's a short corner. He does a good job of coming in, bringing Herman Edwards' defender in. Now watch here. See, he has the feet. The feet were in, but he didn't have control of the ball. You're right. That's a gift for the Dallas Cowboys. And a first down. Out at the 40-yard line, they dig themselves out of a hole with a little help from a stripe of trim. It happened on the Eagle sideline. First and 10 at the 40. And this is Gorsett. 28 toss left, penalty marker down. Let's get even. There's a penalty against the Cowboys on this one, so that'll put it back. Yep, it's a holding. That's a 10-yarder. That gets 10 yards in that other penalty. But I think that other catch that. Let's look at it again and see if we're right. I think we are. Yeah, we are. See, because there, see, he's going out. He doesn't have control right there, and already his feet were out of bounds. Jerry Mark Bright will let us know. Holding number 85, offense, first down. They don't have an 85 on offense. An 85. They just corrected it. They said 84, so I guess it's Doug Cosby. Cosby. You know these numbers pretty well. They don't have what I guarantee you. You know it. <laughs> First and 20. The ball back at the 30. Here's White. Throws quickly Hill again. Good. He had control of that ball, and he had both. You know, on both of those completions, Danny White threw the ball in anticipation before Tony Hill made his cut. Let's see if we can see it. See, now White's looking out. Boom. He throws it. Hill isn't looking yet. He turns, and the ball is right there. That's about as perfect as you can get. That, by the way, is Tony Hill's seventh catch of the day for 95 yards. And the one touchdown that the Cowboys have. Second down, Dallas and four at their own 46. Clock showing exactly 13 minutes left in the third quarter. Set up to 10, Dallas 7. Right again, the throw. Looking and has Dave Stoudy a first down in Eagles territory at the 36 yard line. Stoudy. I'll tell you, the, the reason for that is the pass protection. Danny White had plenty of time to look and to pump. Now watch Charlie. He comes from the outside. He's running him in, under control against the zone defense. He didn't want to get over too far to get into the area of Jerry Robinson. Now he looks like a, like a linebacker. That's all he should have been a linebacker. With dark glasses? Looks like someone that maybe I would have coached along the way. Yes, <laughs> like one, too. First down, Dallas at the Philadelphia 36. Takes the door set. White standing alone. No longer alone. To Drew Pearson. 
batted up into the air. Bernard Wilson pounding the ground. He thought he might have had a chance for an interception, but didn't. And Drew Pearson was pointing to Randy Logan that he was held. That is Carl Hairston who's down for the Philadelphia Eagles on this artificial surface. Out there being looked at by the medical staff of Philadelphia right now. It's 10-7. The Eagles over Dallas in the third. There's Carl Hairston. He got hit just after Danny White let the ball go. Got hit unexpectedly. Right there. You see Danny White gets it. Now watch. Someone comes into the picture there and gets his left leg. You see it right there? He put his shoulder right on his left leg. You know, it looked like Kurt Peterson, the right guard. I think he pulled out, peeled back around, and Carl Hairston didn't see him coming. That indeed would be a great loss because he's not only an outstanding player, but also one of the defensive leaders, one of the team leaders of this green-shirted bunch. And it's always good when you see him get up and walk off without any help. Which he does. Brown has taken his place. It's quite an interesting story. Very interesting. Greg Brown, he's a rookie free agent. Really never played in college. He went to Kansas State as a freshman. Really never played and has impressed this team from day one in training camp. And has a job as a result. And off and fake again. White going deep for Hill. Batted loose just at the last minute. Hill had a chance to come up with it. Back there with him. Blackmore is one of them. With Bernard Wilson. With Bernard Wilson the other. Bernard Wilson that knocked the ball down. And that's his job. He's the safety. We see from the outside, Blackmore is on the outside. Bernard Wilson is supposed to be there. He's the center fielder. He almost misjudged the ball. He had a jump to get that right hand. But that's his job. You take care of the center field. You zone it. You help both corners on a post pattern. As a rule, John, Philadelphia does play all zone defense. Very rarely would you get them in a man-to-man. -man. Right, unless it's this situation right here. Five defensive backs, third and long. Red formation. James Jones joins the set of the backfield and springs. And here's White. Going deep again. He's got Hook Jackson touchdown. Hook Jackson had that California quake going. We're just talking about man to man. They were in man to man. On that play, it was Richard Blackmore. Was man to man. He had help deep from John Shira and put Johnson beat them both. Let's watch this. It's a spot out here. I watch. We'll see. He's on man to man on number 27, Blackmore. See, he gets a beat, but he was supposed to have help from John Shira. Put Johnson on that play. Beat double coverage. <laughs> and dancing Butch just showed you his California point for Texas trimmer after he scored. Raphael Septian will try to make it 14 10 down. Low snap. And got it. 11.53 left in the third quarter. And it's the Cowboys 14, the Eagles 10. the man who just caught the touchdown pass and how many big catches over the years and you remember him Butch Johnson making and not being a starter he gave a little bow there great Butch great move great catch beating double coverage he did it Defty and Casey Campfield five yards deep into the end zone and he stays there the Dallas scoring drive he plays 80 yards four minutes seven seconds twice 36 yards to Butch Johnson. That got it done. They really fired these fans up. They, they started out fired up, and then the Eagles, when they went ahead, stand it up, and they put them down. That's it. Keep it up. Come on, all of you, stand up. Yeah. Good. Keep it going. Good. They get a little wild here when they get ahead. Once in a while. Getting close to the holidays. First they learn that. I love that from the Eagles fans. You know, That's they're, right. They're great for that. Montgomery. And Montgomery gets 
a couple, and now he goes the other way. Ed Jones led that defense. Watch too tall here. He's playing against Jerry Sizemore. You see, he gets in there. He stands him up first. Stands up. Hold the ball. Too tall. Wait for it to come to you. Wait for it. Play it off. Get that right shoulder under, and then plug that hole. Look at that turn. Look at all those white jerseys. And, oh, I, I love these shots. That's, that's great camera work, man. Oh. And that's great technique by a defensive lineman as well. Now they're in the flex on second down. White off the ball, Jones off the ball. Jaworski to throw. Got a man, Carmichael. Carmichael stuck a hand out. Everson Walls, Michael Downs back there with him. In yellow, Marion Campbell, Fox. The Swamp Fox. He's a defensive coordinator, and what an outstanding job he's done with this defense. He's talking to him now about what they have to do the next time they go out on the field. Here, his name being circulated around when they talk about possible coaching changes and new head coaches in certain locations. And he would be a good choice. Third down. Billy Canfield back there with Montgomery alongside Ron Jaworski from the spread. Dallas Lipton, Philadelphia hitting. Charlie Smith is the man who made the reception, and Ron Fellows was the defender. We'll see it here. We'll see Charlie Smith again. This is the now the Cowboys do use a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Ron Fellows is out there man-to-man -man on Charlie Smith, and again he gave too much cushion. You got to get a little tighter on that so you can make a burst at the end to knock it down. Charles Homeboy Smith, eight-year veteran. Time Carmichael goes left. Eagles go on a quick count. Montgomery cuts back inside. Is hit and knocked back after about a yard gain by Bob Brunick. Now that is good middle linebacker technique as well. We were talking about Bob Brunick and the flex defense. Again, it's designed to free up the middle linebacker. Now, if you free up a middle linebacker, he has to make the play. Now, see, there's no blocker on Brunick. He was free to come down the line. He sees Wilbert Montgomery, puts his head in front, and wraps those arms around. That's well done. That is very well done. About a yard is all. And yeah, that spot in the middle made the tackle. Now it's Dutton that's back off the line. And Jaworski, who's back to throw. Pressure. Intended for one foot of Charlie Smith and Dennis Thurman. Comes up with his second interception of the day. He keeps playing like that. The Cowboys might pay his fine. I'm sure they will. He has a meeting with the commissioner. He, he doesn't think he should have been fined. But watch this. They're trying to get a post or deep pattern to Charlie Smith. Dennis Thurman has great position on him. Dorsey throws the ball too long. And the only one that can make the play is Dennis Thurman. Well, you've seen a couple of clinics, in fact, three on the last three defensive plays by Dallas. 14-10, they lead. Dennis Thurman. They said he wasn't big enough to play. They said he wasn't fast enough to play, but he's got two interceptions today. Both thrown by Ron Jaworski, and he's played good football all year long. Jaworski's had a little bit of a frustrating day. Nine out of 21, not up to his standard. First down, Dallas. They give to Dorsett. Dorsett got up over the right side for about eight yards. You know, there's a lot of talk about the new Tony Dorsett. And you know when it all started? It all started after the championship game in Philadelphia when the Eagles beat these Cowboys. Tony Dorsett said he had a meeting with himself, and he said, look, self, I have all this natural ability, but I have to do more with it. And he went to work. You have to satisfy that man in the glass that you look at in the morning, don't you? And that's what he did. Second and two, Dallas. Door set again. Lockers in front. Look out. Out 
to the 40, outside the 40 to the 46, so set up quickly. Now that was a run. That's the way you know, they pulled the off guard, Herb Scott, and did he get a block on that one to allow Dorsett to get the first down. After that run, Dorsett has number one back. Rodgers, we told you what he did earlier today, and that's his up-to-date total. And now Dorsett, after that last carrier, goes back one yard in front, and he leads the NFL in rushing. Cowboys have never had a runner that did that. You know, and all four of those backs were Heisman Trophy runners. White, Ron Springs has the completion, spins out of bounds, close out of bounds, close to midfield. Reggie Wilkes hit him and knocked him in that direction. You know, one thing that the Cowboys do, they have so many players and so many things that they really have great mixture. They can they throw to tight ends, they throw to backs out of the backfield, they throw to the wide receivers, they run to Dorsett. And I know that Dick Vermeil knows that it's really tough to defend that because you can't zero in on any one thing. You look at the league statistics, and of course, early in the year, they don't mean necessarily that much. But now, this late, they do first down down. And you get a pretty good offensive picture when you look at who leads what category. And if you look at the leading pass receivers, there are no Cowboys. That's right, because when, when you have three or four receivers, they're all going to catch their share, and no one will lead in Going into today, Ron Springs was the pass receiving leader for Dallas with 41. First down for the Cowboys right at the 50. Rafferty, the center, has Johnson just across the line. Drew Pearson speed now in motion, accelerates as he goes, pitch back door set, starts up to you. Couple. Carl Harrison led the defense. From the other side of the field, along with Charlie Johnson, you're talking about Tom Rafferty and Charlie Johnson. Charlie Johnson won that battle. Let's see if we can see it again here. Now watch, he'll line up on the nose as close to the ball as he can. Get your hands on that center. Straighten him up. You see how he plays his hands there? Just wait for the ball. There's the cut. Charlie Johnson explodes right into it. That's a great nose tackle play. You know, another interesting thing, although Johnson won that battle, and indeed he did, Rafferty does something that I know you are very much in favor of. Look how far away from him he's got that ball. That keeps the nose tackle away from him. That's right. You put it as far out as you can, and that gets that defender away. A fumble. Peterson got it, I believe. Dallas still has it, yes. It's the second time that the Cowboys had a little problem here. And it's, again, it's happening right after the exchange. See, he gets the ball. That time he was stripped there. Someone came in from the outside. LeMaster. Yeah, it was Frank LeMaster came in and knocked the ball out, and Kurt Peterson was there to recover it. So it'll be third down and five. Six minutes, 40 seconds left, third quarter. Dallas 14, Philadelphia 10. Cowboys won the first one, 17-14. Uh, Springs and James Jones in the backfield. White doesn't like the formation. And he takes the timeout. Jerry Mark Bright, the official, and Tom Landry. He looks like he'd be ready to command the battle of the balls or whatever you need. Third down five, Dallas has the football at the Eagle 45, Cowboys lead 14-10. Six and a half minutes left to play third quarter. Eagles led 10-0 at one point. Cowboys got a break and a fumble punt just before halftime and got themselves back into the contest. Hosby and Pearson wide left, Hill out wide to the right. Quickly, Springs, first down Dallas. They do indeed get a lot of people into the act. They spread it around. You know, that was one thing that, that they wanted. They lost Preston Pearson, who, who they don't have this year. They needed a receiver who can play that inside slot position in the spread formation, and they came up this year with Ron Springs. Springs they got uh, by perhaps good fortune. He was hurt in his senior year at Ohio State. And not much was known about him, and Dallas was able to come up with it. 
San Francisco gotten used to the muddy track at Candlestick. They lead 21 nothing over Houston. Here springs the ball carrier. Nothing doing as Carl Hairston, the steady one, does it again. You know, the 49ers have always been known as an offensive team, but you know, they started those three rookies in the secondary. Everyone was working it, and now they're starting to get shutouts at the end of the season. Well, Harrison's had a full day's work, hasn't he? He's been all over that field. There's Dick Vermeil. He's very cordial and cooperative yesterday when we talked with him. He always is. Second down nine for Dallas. Ball at the Eagles 35, three wide receivers. White. Pumps. It's going. Looking for Butch Johnson again. Butch is claiming somebody was interfering with him. That's not uh, his regular dance. Butch Johnson is excited. He thought that Herman Edwards grabbed him before the ball was thrown or as the ball was in the air. Again, the rule is you can hit him the first five yards. After five yards, you can't touch him. Now, let's see what happens here. He, he comes inside to a post, goes out to the corner. Right there, you see Herman Edwards had his left. Oh, right there. That, that's the one that Butch was complaining about. Rightly so. You know, a defensive back tries to get that hand in there because if the officials don't see it, the momentum of the receiver will put you in good defensive position. Third and long springs as the lone back, back in the backfield with White. Rafferty again with a blind snap. A little high, but White looked it in. Butch Johnson had it, dropped it. Randy Logan back there with him, along with Richard Blackmore. And along with John Shira. There were really three in that area. That time, on the touchdown, Shira let Butch Johnson get in behind him. That time he took a deeper angle and they met at the goal line. Cowboys send their punting unit on the field. Danny White, of course, stays and watches him in. But again, as I'm sure the Eagles are very much aware, he, of course, can throw it and he will run it. The last time in this position, he hit a real high one. And of course, he gave John Shire a problem. I bet he does the same thing. Wally Henry has gone back now in safety position for Philadelphia. His white angles for the sidelines and might have it. Might have a dandy. Benny Barnes, who for years and years has been so outstanding in special team coverage, was the first man down there, and White gets it out of bounds inside the five at the three and a half yard line. Now it's 14, Philadelphia 10. These babies caught. 14, Philadelphia 10. And the Eagles backed up to their own three-yard line. They finally put it down. Danny White is not among the leaders in distance in putting, but boy, in effectiveness he is. In fact, he ranks number two. A ball down and net yardage inside the point. Mars to Dulorski to their fullback, Hubert Oliver, and nothing doing there. John Dutton, who started to play well of late, makes the stop. 420 left to play third quarter. Excuse me, John. You know, he and Too Tall Jones, as we said earlier, they really man that left side of that Cowboy defense. And what the Eagles need now is a first down. They want to get out of this field position. Yeah, those two. One is 6'7". That's Dutton. Jones is 6'9 and 270. Dutton goes about 270 also. Both are thin. Penalty markers. Dworsky fires down the middle. Intended for Ron Smith. And down. Pop him. Smith is right up. A penalty marker goes down. Very quickly. Two penalty markers down. There's one back there. I'm sure it'll be one of those offsetting deals, Pat. The one in the backfield will probably be holding against the Eagles. The one down here was for hitting late. And they'll offset. I was impressed with how quickly Ron Smith got up because he really took a shot. He took a shot from Mike Downs and he went down and just bounced right back up. Maybe from the momentum of the shot. Well, it 
was illegal motion plus unnecessary roughness, so they'll play it over. Watch this shot here that Ron Smith takes. Watch him here. He's man to man. It'll be the safety from the inside. Mike down. See, the ball goes beyond him. There's no ball there, and that's why he was he was penalized for that. Now, let's listen to this explanation. I think this is one of those situations where a personal foul has to be penalized. There were two fouls on the play. Illegal formation. the way that it should be. I know that these fans here don't, but just because a team lines up wrong, that doesn't mean that you get a free shot at any offensive play. I agree with that. I do too. Except the explanation might cut us into 60 minutes. Here's Duarte. Outside Smith, and maybe he remembers. Thurman and Waters out there looking at him. May not remember. He may, he may still be feeling the effects of that hit that he took from Michael down. Here comes Spagnola in with a message for Jaworski. Hubert Oliver comes out. There's Big John checking in. What's Johnson getting a little bomb on the left knee? I think that's ice is getting there. What they're trying to do is he probably had a bump there and they don't want any swelling. So it's second and 10 from the 21. Jaworski back to throw again. Does complete. Ryan Smith made the catch on the left side hit by Dennis Thurman. I'm sure Ron Smith went back to the huddle and he said, I got hit one, I dropped one, give it to me again. Now he's getting a big cushion over there on this side. We can see he drives Dennis Thurman deep. But Thurman's thinking if... Smith just makes a little comeback right there to the sideline and catches the ball. It was a great pattern because he sold Dennis Furman on the fact that he was going deep and then didn't. This time they send Carmichael out to the left on Thurman. Ron Smith comes out wide to the right. Jaworski. You saw the book on him. One lone set back to Wilbert Montgomery. He gets the carry and gets maybe a yard, perhaps two. Before he's twisted around and thrown backwards, led by Bob Bruni. John Dutton again involved in the play. You know, when I was talking to Ernie Spotner yesterday, he said the two people that we have to stop, we have to stop Robert Montgomery and we have to stop Harold Carmichael. Now, I don't know that Harold Carmichael has caught a pass. He caught one early, I think in the first possession. There's Ernie Stockner on the right, and now he moves to the other place. Gil Brandt. Super scout. There's the other fellow waiting. He's in his stance. He looks like a middle linebacker. <laughs> he could have been. There's Jaworski going deep. For Ron Smith. Everson Walls back there with him. Thought he had a chance for an interception. Didn't come up with it. He's up there. It's interesting. Early in the season, everyone pitched picked on the rookie free agent Everson Walls, and now he's there. Geez, I had that thing. I, I And now, he's cut, he, he has so much confidence that he's down here, can't get beat in man-to-man -man coverage. You can tell by the way he walks. I know it. He just, Tom Landry said something. I don't think he knows any better. He's just <laughs> supposed to be worried out there. He has ice water in his veins. He's a Charlie, free agent. Charlie Smith comes out with that free agent. Carmichael lined up on the inside of him, runs Smith out to the left, Canfield in the backfield with Jaworski. They operate from their spread. Yeah, look at that run. Chased by too tall, down by too tall. Not a first down. He bounced past the marker. Too tall chased him. They may put it down closer to a first down than I thought originally. This is going to be very close. Now, what? Oh, it looked like Sizemore jumped the uh, account there a little. See what he's doing? He's taking on two calls short. You know, you take them right now on the line of scrimmage. See, he did a good job there, but this is what they call second effort. See, he was blocked, and then he comes back, and he still makes a play. Benny Barnes finally wrapped him up, and it's the first down Philadelphia. 
That's one of those right foot jobs. You know, but this has been a great job, a great drive by the Eagles coming off that goal line. They got some help from that penalty against Mike Downs when he popped Ron Smith. Magnola and Trepley, 84 and 88, both in the game for Philadelphia. And Ron Jaworski looks like he has good touchstone now. Winding down to the end of the third quarter, six back Montgomery. Charlie Waters wraps him up. Got about four, however, shy of the 50-yard line. Again, in the event you might have joined us late, that artificial surface is very wet, although some people say that sometimes that makes traction better on an artificial surface. But it's been raining all morning, stopped midway first quarter, and now it's not. And the fog looks like it's about to move in through the hole in the roof. Second and five. A minute, ten seconds left to play third quarter. 14-10, Dallas over Philadelphia. Jaworski looks for Carmichael, has him. That'll be enough for a first. And now they say he juggled it. No first down. They probably talked about that one at halftime. That they, you know, you have to watch the juggle, and you have to watch the feet, too. Let's see if we can see it here. Sizemore's doing a good job of pass protection here. But watch here. Carmichael has the ball. I don't know. He looked like he had control to me. Yeah. You can tell we were blocked out a little bit, but... Well, he had it in one arm. Yeah. He had it in his right arm, sure. and he had his left arm free, so I would say that he had control. Hey, it'll be third down. The Eagles still upset about that call. 102 left third quarter. Jaworski asking for quiet. And remember a couple of weeks ago against Miami when this happened. Penalty marker down. Incomplete pass. Intended for Ron Smith. Everson Walls, the defender. I don't know that he got that playoff within the 30 seconds, Pat. I don't think he did. I think the 30 second clock expired before the ball was snapped. So that'll be a penalty on number seven. Now, this is one you can't refuse, is it? Yep. Ball starts, number 63, offense, third down. Still third down. As long on that one, I guess it wasn't the, uh, the clock. Although the clock was at zero when they. Uh, through the penalty, but that was on the right guard, Ron Baker. So it's still third down and 10, 58 seconds left third quarter. Ball back at the 44. Cowboys showing blitz again. Or whatever it is. There's a lot of changing. Jaworski taking a long time. No blitz. Jaworski hit just as he lets it go. Incomplete. He threw that one because he had to. Randy White blowing around the right side and pop the horse. I hope we can see that again. I'll tell you, on this one, they're playing a mind game with Jaworski. They faked the blitz, got out of it, a stunt. Now, Randy White comes from the outside. He starts at right tackle, came around the right end, and back in and hit Jaworski just as he threw the ball. So Max Runniger goes back for Philadelphia, and James Jones goes back deep for Dallas. Runniger off the side of his foot. Jones lets it bounce. I don't know why, really. And the Eagles will down it at the Dallas three-yard line. It rolls out of bounds. I am not sure if that's a tough spot back there handling those kicks why he let that one bounce. You know, unless he thought it was going out of bounds or he thought that he couldn't get to it to handle it cleanly. But in any case, you want to feel every punch. It didn't look like much. It turned out to be 53 yards by Runniger. Next Saturday, the NFL today begins it, and we'll continue it as we'll be at the Meadowlands for the Dallas Cowboys visit against the Giants, who beat St. Louis today to keep their playoffs alive. Playoff hopes, I should say. And the Cowboys, well, they've got a lot at stake as well. Even if they win today, they'll still be playing for that home field advantage down the road for the best record. You get a lot of breaks if you have that. Here is Drew Pearson in motion to the right. This is Dorsett in motion 
also to the right. He gets out to about the five. He did a lot of running in the end zone. Got it out to about the five, maybe the six. Reggie Wilkes made the stop. I guess with a great back like Tony Dorsett, you can do those types of things, but that is a very dangerous play because watch how long he has to stay in the end zone before he gets back out of the end zone. And you know, that's taking a big chance that a defender doesn't get there. That's a two point play. And that could uh, certainly be a factor as we come down to the end of the third quarter. That is the end of the third quarter with the score Dallas 14 Philadelphia 10 will be back at the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station from your local station tonight it's Super all with John Madden at Texas Stadium where the Cowboys lead Philadelphia by the score of 14 to 10 we're about to start the fourth quarter and that's what's happened in the fourth quarter to the Philadelphia Eagles the last three weeks. Opponent 29. The Eagles nothing. Right now they need five to get ahead. Six. White. Billy Joe Dupree. Still on his feet. Spins out of bounds at about the 20. Richard Blackmore knocked him out of bounds. Billy Joe has a first for Dallas. That was a great play against in, in that situation. You are running down. Eagles are playing run. You fake to the run. Have the tight end fake a block and then have him come underneath everything. If you're an Eagle fan. We don't want to paint too dismal a picture. But those are the facts. Right now they trail 14-10. But each game is a separate enemy. Right? Today is today. And Cowboys and Texas and all those types of things. <laughs> that one I'm going to think about. Here's Dorsett back to the weak side. Looking for some place to go. Finding some place to go. Fumble. Springs picks it up. And Springs gets out to the 40-yard line. Outside the 40. It'll be enough for Dallas. But Sam Randy Logan stopped him. I don't know how he was there or why he was there. But Springs is in the right place at the right time. There's nothing like that, is there? Said has had a little problem fumbling today. That's that tackle trap that gave him trouble last time. That was Jim Cooper came all the way across from his right position to trap, and then Dorsett was stripped of the ball right there. Springs was in position to pick it up. It Gary was, Robinson. Robinson hit Dorsett to cause the fumble, but it worked out to Dallas advantage. It's the first down outside the 40-yard line. First and 10. Clock running with 14 minutes left to play. Dallas up by four. Digging themselves out of a hole. Here is Springs breaking into the secondary and out to the 50 for nine yards. Very nearly another first down. Herman Edwards put him airborne. As we see Ron Springs walk back to the huddle, we're seeing more and more teams wear gloves. More and more players wear those golf gloves on this artificial turf. You know, they can't use stick them anymore. So I think they've gone to the golf gloves, and that gives them some tactness in their, in their hands. Nine yards for Springs make it second and one. Right at the 50. Right in the star. Look how far Rafferty has that ball out in front of him. Just about as far as he can reach. Keeping Charlie Johnson as far away as he can. They give to Springs again. Springs nudges his way into Eagle territory, close to a first down. Charlie Johnson didn't keep him far enough away. Or he got to him quick on that one. Short yardage play coming up here. I bet you will see the two tight ends see Jay Saldy come in motion. I bet they run the ball where Jay Saldy goes. What do you think? From that flanker position, he'll start in motion. Yeah. He's lined up tight to the right. Yeah. Go. Got to go in motion to the other direction, right? Mm -hmm. There he goes. They got the first down. They did exactly what you said. The reason they do that is they're able to get an extra blocking. They can have the, the lead back, springs go in, plus they get that extra tight end to get a little push on that side. 
Tony Dorsett needed 88 yards at the beginning of the day to become the Cowboys all time leading rusher. He needs 11 now. Don Perkins. He was not a great big guy either. But she did have a great big heart. He's the all time leader. Here's Dorsett. Tiptoes out of bounds at the Philadelphia 45. Now Chesley knocked him out. Watch the nose tackle there. Charlie Johnson, see, he's in there. John Rafferty grabs him by the face mask and lets him go. He gets spun around and someone got him by the ankle. Those guys, those nose tackles, that get hit from every angle. They get hit from straight ahead, from the right side, from the left side, from back, from tight ends, from everyone. You ought to pay him a couple of salaries to play that position. We saw a play in film yesterday in the first game where Dallas put three men on the nose pack. It wasn't Johnson, it was Clark. Triple team. Here comes the reverse. Here is Duke Pearson looking for someplace to go and nothing doing. The Eagles trying to rip the ball loose. I think they did. And they got it, and they got it. Gary Robinson knocked it loose for Pearson. Boys, of course, were saying he was down and nothing doing. I thought they were going to throw it back to Danny White. That was what the officials did. I thought Pearson was going to throw the ball. But Jerry Robinson makes an outstanding play here. You see, he's a right linebacker. He doesn't go with the reverse. He stays there and waits. You know, and then when the reverse comes to him, he's in position to make the play. He's got a lot of guys running around him. What was all that stuff? You know, you try and influence the linebacker on a reverse. Jerry Robinson's smart. He didn't go for it. And Robinson comes up with a football as well as knocking it loose from Drew Pearson. And the Eagles will take over in good shape at midfield. Right. He's right here. He makes a perfect tackle. He gets his helmet right on the ball. And that's what knocks it out of Pearson's hand. So it belongs to Philadelphia midfield. 11:35 left fourth quarter. The tight end set up again for the Eagles. One running back, Montgomery. Here they come with their reverse. This is Ron Smith. They got some room. Everson Wall came up with some help from D.D. Lewis. That's the turnover picture. Philadelphia two, Dallas two. And they all have been very important factors. And, of course, how important that last one is depends on what Philadelphia does with the ball now. You know, that time on the reverse before, Jerry Robinson didn't go. He just waited there. On that reverse, they didn't fool D.D. Lewis. They got seven yards, second and three at the Dallas 43. Warski is the quarterback. He hands Montgomery. And Montgomery nudges himself out to a, close to a first down. Bob Brunig made the stop. What's always impressed me about Wilbur Montgomery is his strength. You know, I mean, we know he has the moves and all that in the open field, and he can catch the ball. But when he gets in there, he really finishes those runs off. He has strong leg drive. And not that big, John. No, he only weighs 190, 195 pounds. But he, plays, he, he says he's not that big. 180, 185. That's but he's playing. He yeah. Third and short for Philadelphia. That's big Harold Carmichael swinging in motion, and that's Montgomery. Fumble, maybe. Hit by Dennis Thurman. Montgomery got the first down. Thurman does hit, doesn't he? He does, and Montgomery does run. You know, we saw the play before where he ran with power, and that play, he made a great move. It doesn't look like a lot. He started into the right, felt a little soft spot out to the left, and made that cut with the right foot and picked up the first down. Not a big play for yardage, but that was a great move. Big first down for the Eagles. They're moving from the Dallas 37. The score of the first game was 17-14 in favor of Dallas. Right now, the Cowboys lose 14-10 as Jaworski looks and throws quickly. Bob Brunig right with Hubert Oliver. They got a couple of yards, but that's all. That's the thing with a man-to-man -man defense. You can do that. Bob Brunig had man-to-man -man coverage on Hubert Oliver. He didn't drive him deep. And you try and get those types of passes against zone, but you don't gain much against a man-to-man. 
Notice Brunig looking over to the sideline to Ernie Stotner and Tom Landry to find out what kind of call he wants for his defense. Both wide to the right. Montgomery is flanked out to the left. Washi looking right, looking deep. Penalty marker down, intended for Montgomery, who just had to give it away. Penalty marker probably in that vicinity has to be holding. It is. You know, and I know what Dick Vermeil is thinking right now. You know, he said before the game that offensively, we've been snake bit. And that looks like a snake bite right there. You finally get things going, and then boom, you get that 10 yarder that just kills anything you have. Well, you look back at the statistics of last week's game against Washington. They had just an overwhelming advantage in total yardage, but lost. Holding number 50, offense, second down. It is Guy Morris, the center. Let's see what he did. Let's see if we can see it. He'll be blocking Randy White. You see Randy White there, number 54. They start on a double. Kenny has him in the outside. Morris is in good position right there. And then he just put his left hand on his jersey and pulled him down. There not be too much argument about that. So it'll be second down and 18 from the Dallas 45 now. Yep. Faking blitz. If indeed it's a fake. Jaworski had a man almost Carmichael knocked away by Michael Down, then Charlie Waters is close by. You know, that was one thing. You always talk about wanting receivers to come back to the ball. It didn't look like Harold Carmichael worked back to the ball. You like him to get up, push up there in that hook, make him think you're going deep, and then come back so that that defender can't catch up with you. It'll be third down. They're all big plays, but this one is of large magnitude right here. 842 left to play. Morris looking around the center. Cowboys again showing faking blitz. Dickerson on one side, Barnes on the other side. Jaworski backed up. And he's firing deep. And it's intercepted by Everson Wall. Everson Wall's got that, and that's great, but I'll tell you who caused that. We'll see him get it right here. See, the ball's thrown a little short. We'll see him here, now watch it stop. He comes back and gets it, and you know why that ball was thrown short? Because Randy White hit Ron Jaworski just as he threw the ball. Walls comes up with the interception. He broke the record that was held by Mel Renfro. Walls will get credit for it, but number 54 coming from the outside is the man that caused it. Watch it. Now, Jaworski can't step up. Watch it. Just as he steps, he can't follow through because Brandy White was right in his face. There is Everson Walls. That interception broke Mel Renfro's record for interceptions in a year. One time it was a very difficult rookie year for him, but always spectacular, and it still is. White on the hop to Hill. Gary Robinson out there with uh, Tony Hill. Up to date, that's the way it is. The team total is 35. That leads the NFL. Walls has 11 with that one he just got. Thurman has two today. Downs has six. And of all the members of the secondary that you thought at the beginning of the year would be suspect, those would be the three, and they lead the team in interception. And that pass rush has added a lot to that. They don't get any credit for it, but there ought to be a stat that puts them up there, how many they cause. They got Garcet. Looking, ducking, diving. Reggie Wilkes. Stopped him. Dorsett at the 15, perhaps. 
Eagles are squirming. Dick Vermeil saying, look, we're going to get the ball back, man. You know, we have plenty of time. There's eight minutes left in this game. We're only down by four points. Our defense can play strong here. We're going to get some more chances. The Eagles haven't lost four games in a row since 1977. They've lost three in a row now. That was Dick Vermeil's second year. close he usually finds a way to hang it you know he has big hands you see those hands here he's not a big man but you know, when you shake hands with him he has hands like a tackle you're talking about those gloves John you know if you notice what Butch does he wears golf gloves yes but he cuts the fingers out and lets his fingers stick out to the end of the where he's cut here's Ron Springs speaking of cutting inside the 30 to about the 28 Randy Logan top hand. Tell you, you can only give a team like Dallas so many shots at your defense, even though your defense is the best in the league. Landry signals for Robert Newhouse in a short yardage situation, second and two as we check around. Denver driving to the playoffs, 16 6 over Seattle. And Chicago defeating the Oakland Raiders at the moment, 23 6. San Francisco moving against Houston, 28 0. Here it's 14-10 Dallas and Dallas moving. That's Dorset and Dorset flex, flashes down for the first down. That should put him close to breaking Don Perkins' all-time Dallas record. I'm sure, that is a record. I wonder if they'll stop the game and give him the ball or anything. It doesn't look like it, but what did he make a cut on that one? Up, oh, he's one yard short. We just found out. But he started to the left, bounced back to the right. Set as 24 carries, has picked up 87 yards on the day. Increasing his margin in the NFL, the leadership over George Rogers of New Orleans. He goes back deep in the eye, springs in front of him. Look how deep he is. That's Springs. Springs barrels down to about the 16, perhaps the 17. Randy Logan made the stop. You know, when you talk about big plays, Pat, that third down completion to Butch Johnson was one of the biggest plays in this game. Because had they had that been incomplete, then the Eagles would have gotten the ball back with good position and plenty of time. Springs checks out. Newhouse is in. Beg your pardon. James Jones is in along with Dorsett. Dorsett started on one side, now moves back. Little Jones. Second down. It is Dorsett with Herbert Scott out in front, and Dorsett bangs down to about the 15 before he's knocked out of bounds by Frank Lamaster. Does that give him a rest? That does. I still wonder if they'll stop the game. Well, they said uh, before the game, our information was if the Cowboys have it well in hand, they would stop it and present him with the game ball. I wonder if you watch Tony Gorsett. I wonder if he even knows. It. They just put it up in the scoreboard. The fans are standing up. Straight ahead, trying for that first. in that ring of honor which goes around the middle deck those names in cowboy history Meredith Willie Perkins Howley and Renfro Renfro had his all time single season interception record broken today by Everson Walls the rookie and now Tony Dorsett is the all 
all-time rushing leader for Dallas. Perkins, Hill, and Newhouse behind him. First down, Dallas. Give us to run. Spring scores. Boys out 
out quickly. Springs and Gulf Jeff behind White. Pearson in motion, pitch back, 28, toss left. But Tony Dorsetti almost broke that. He got about four. They're getting back. We don't pick the most valuable player or most valuable anything, but if we, if we did, to me today, it would sure be Randy White because he's caused a heck of a lot of havoc with the Eagles passing game. John, they're just checking that record book, and we've had to do a lot of that today. That interception, the third one by Thurman, ties... A cowboy individual record, which was shared by Herb Adderley, familiar name, and Leroy Jordan, another one. Second down, Dallas, and six from the Philadelphia 23. Springs to the 20, 19 maybe. Not a first. Reggie Wilkes made the tackle. Boy, that's the big statistic. You know, you can talk about yardage and everything else, but the Eagles had five turnovers today, four interceptions. That giveaway takeaway ratio is also very important. Tough day for him. Tough day. He's had a few tough weeks here. You know, there are some people that thought that they maybe ought to switch quarterbacks. Sit for me and say it's not our quarterback. The team thing. It's an offense. 11 men. Sally goes in motion again. Dorsett goes over the left side. He'll have the first down. He's about the 15. Usually, uh, when you get into a game like this, and you have the time left, which is just over two and a half minutes, the crowd starts to depart when it looks like the game is under control, but nobody I can see is left today. Not for this one, because this is the championship of the Eastern Division. Cowboys had it. They lost it last year to these Philadelphia. Oops, there goes the guy leaving. But they have it. And, you know, to a man yesterday, they said, we have to win this game. We don't want to wait for that last week and have to go up and beat the Giants in New York. They ran it down to the two-minute warning, which now occurs, and Vermeil and Landry will be notified of such. Wyatt is over-talking to Landry. Dallas leading 21-10 over a lot of the people in the stands might be standing out at the windows right now. Maybe that's where they're going. There's the Cowboys with two minutes to go and leading already by 11. Looks like they'll be enjoying a week off and not having to worry about playing the wild card game and host a playoff game. First weekend of the great new year. Two minutes to go on the scoreboard clock. Springs and Dorsett behind White. First down, Cowboys. This is James Jones. Jones to about the 11, stopped by Carl Harrison. I think that this is a situation here, you know, where the team is down by 11 points. It's a minute 44. I would think that the Eagles may take some timeouts now because whatever happens, they're going to need at least two scores. Dallas has two timeouts remaining. The Eagles have all three of theirs, and they're going to have to start taking some pretty soon. Dallas will take as long as they can in the huddle. The Eagles still have to win a game to assure themselves of that wild card deal. There are a lot of possibilities brought about by this. Here's Springs barreling down to about the seven. Clock still running. As you say, all the Eagles had to do was win one game, and then they would be in the playoffs. Of course, they've lost three in a row, and then right now we know what's happening here. Now he takes the time. In a situation here, a similar situation last year, the Eagles had the lead. Cowboys had to beat them by 25 points, and they had them 35-10. The Eagles came roaring back. And one of the best shows of character I've seen. The minutes following football, of course, except on the West Coast, where you'll see it at its regular time. The Eagles, all they can do is shake their heads at the moment. Dallas 21, Philadelphia 10, 51 seconds left to play in this contest. 
a game that was so very important and is to both teams now seems to be in the Dallas W column. You know the Eagles took the time out here. What they're trying to do is stop them on this third down, make them kick a field goal, and then still have two scores to get. Fourth quarter, 51 seconds left to play. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Texas Stadium in Dallas, or Irving more correctly, the home of the Cowboys. A game that's developed pretty much as I think uh, we suspected it might. Dallas down driving again. They lead 21-10, 51 seconds left to play, third down two. Springs, Jones, runners. Dorsett, I'm sorry. 23 and 33. Or do you go for the first down? What I would do, I would I would make them use another timeout. See, because what the Eagles have to do now here is take a timeout, and then I would run the ball again, and then of course that would be change of possession, but make them go the distance. See, if they kick the field goal, then they have to kick off, and the Eagles could win with two scores. They're measuring for first down, so all our conjecture might be just uh, conjecture. It's all academic, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's a first down, Dallas. First and goal at the five. Tom Landry is not the kind of individual who would ever run up the score on anybody. That doesn't necessarily apply to his fans, however. And the Dallas Cowboy fans, they'd like more. I'm sure, and Tom knows what a rivalry this is and what it's been, and he isn't going to put any fuel on that fire. At the five, first and goal for the Dallas Cowboys. Somebody jumped. Dallas is just running out the clock, as I said a minute ago. Landry is not the kind of man who does something like that. Tonight on CBS, starts with 60 minutes with his two great specials. First, the all-star party for Burt Reynolds, followed by the sixth annual Circus of the Stars. It's all tonight on CBS. And this one is over. Dallas has beaten Philadelphia 21 to 10. Dallas is the NFC Eastern Division champion, coached by Tom Landry. There's the guy who had an outstanding day, John Cutler. Very good, outstanding coach. Tom never seems to get uh, overly excited about anything, but always seems to get it done. And I'm sure that that man in the trench coat will go down as one of the great ones who ever coached this game. More John Madden then from Texas Stadium. This is Pat Summerall.